a very important meeting. So of the places that we've been hitting, which one do you think looks the best? Um, da, 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 da. so we've got we got downtown, we got uh, we got Sixth Street, we got uh, South Lamar, um, we got um, you know what? As I'm saying it, I'm, I'm, all I can think about is the fact that it's raining. Mm -hmm. it makes me feel like Sixth Street would be better. Yeah, and hopefully, since it's raining, there'll be fewer people on the street. Yeah, which would be nice. So that works for me. By the way, what? It's been a little while. How you doing, Brian? Oh man, is it time for a very important meeting? <laughs> it is. Oh, <laughs> dude, I know one thing, and that it's Sunday night. It's 40, 38 degrees, and raining, and I get oh. to whoa, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to uh, to <laughs> to go stand walking up and down Sixth Street over and over again. Yeah. Ain't no wrong with that. Special night edition of <laughs> Scam School. Nights. Very important meeting nights. Yeah. Hey, I had a moment, and I, I almost tweeted, but I couldn't. I was in the middle of trying to figure out, like, the right way to phrase it that wouldn't look like I was just, you know, asking people to watch ads. But, like, that collection of Scam School ads, mm -hmm. I, got, I got into a time vortex, and I just absolutely adore that we've taken, you know, what was a sponsored message break or whatever, and turned it into this opportunity to have all these bizarre vignettes. And you have done such an amazing job of growing that space. And uh, and I like and I like the fact that Bryce has stepped into everything without missing a beat. Yeah, uh, those are good little vignettes, man. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Um, and you know, they they definitely branch out from the Scam School brand in an interesting way. Well, and what that's the funny part, right? Is it's sort of like a pseudopod that extends us out into some... T Number one, they're better because they're more interesting than listening to someone say, you know, Audible is the leading way to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but number two... Uh, not going to slam on the brakes. Please don't turn. Yeah, damn it. Uh, you saw it here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> wet, and I didn't uh, We're doing 60. Um, mm -hmm. And then somebody definitely went behind us. So yeah. That guy is guiltier than this guy. Uh, He's the real monster. Number one. <laughs> number one, the fact that we're able to take what was fairly dead space from an entertainment standpoint and convert it into uh, good space makes the shows better. But number two, the fact that, I mean, my favorite thing on the planet was to go visit the Film Riot gang because I got to pretend to be an actor and, uh, yeah. you know, have lines and scripts and all this stuff. And the fact that we get to do that in, in in Austin now is awesome. Although I do feel like we should go back and visit the film riot guys. We should. They live like right by my dad. So. Uh, oh yeah, right on. Oh, that's right. They moved since I saw them last. Yeah. So what's the, where's your head at as far as like the creative element of things? Are you afraid you're like out of ideas for the for the sponsor breaks? Uh, they come and they go. You know, uh, sometimes I'm just like, oh my god, like the film right thing was just something we thought of like two weeks before we shot it, and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, but now uh, you have a burgeoning career as a rapper. That's true. What What's it like to? How did you compose that? Did you just get you saying all those individual things, or did you do that live, or what? Uh, so I found the I found the. Hold on. Oh god, it's so bright. Um, <laughs> How do you do it, Brian? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, so I found the uh, the track on APM, our music library, and uh, and so I kind of listened to it, found like the, the little segment that I really wanted to use that felt like it would work in like a six second interval. Right. Um, and then yeah, I just I 
I sort of loosely scripted out what it was going to say, and then... So so I, that was all live to tape, except for... And then you went back and did the, the, the secondary guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just one run-through, um, and then I just laid it over the, over the beat. All right, so beat. what are we going to do next? I just... Do you, do you have ideas like in the pipeline? Ad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have I have an idea for uh, for you being the president. Uh, that I think Love would it be pretty great. Uh, I have to flesh it out a little bit more, but it seems like it'll be fun. Awesome. Um, we we have those we have those ideas that we came up with for um, extended ads, which I still really like and want to do at some point. Uh, we just have to have. Oh yeah, no, we got to keep those top secret, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So yeah. Uh, but those are really cool. Yeah, no, those those are an adventure. I uh, man, would it be too ambitious? Here's the thing: is it's easy for me to, you know, sort of envision, you know, what it would look like to do X, Y, or Z. But uh, but like, I wonder if we could do some like totally cheap Tron level effects, uh, like old Tron, 1980s Tron. Right. Uh, I don't know what that would look like. Yeah, that could be cool. Uh, or like a 1960s science fiction. I guess you did that with the 2001 thing. Right. Hmm. I'm just utterly drawn to the science fiction stuff. Have we done like like wizard uh, fairies in the forest type stuff? Uh, no. What's... I don't know, put on some like Gandalf robes or some shit. Wave a staff around, shoot lightning at an, an orc. Well, I came up with an idea like a billion years ago with Roberta that we're gonna do a D and D ad. Yeah. Which I still want to do at some point, which would be awesome. Oh, like all of us around the table, yeah. we're describing stuff, and then we cut to the scenes of them happening. Or uh, we could we could do that as well. Uh, I mean, uh, my the idea as far as I got it was just around the table, um, just to be quick with it, but. We can definitely come up with. Can we do a tribute that. to Heat Vision and Jack? I actually almost filmed one. What? At some point. Uh, that, that was one of the first ideas. Oh, that's amazing! Um, and then I just ended up not doing it because I couldn't. I couldn't get to fit right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm well, totally I'm up for that. Come sunrise, I'll be so intelligent. No cell phone. What about? Um, Man, all I do is I just scrape my childhood and adult media consumption habits. Yeah. Man, this is going to be some delightful weather to be walking around in. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, it's going to look Blade Runner as hell. Yeah, we've we've only done like night rainy stand-ups twice before. But once before, they look good. They did look good. Um, usually we shoot during the day, but just for scheduling reasons, we have to do it during the night this time. All right, can we talk about? Can we talk about the fact that uh, I'm not saying we have the money, uh, but uh, but uh, like like have you looked into doing a vest study cam thing for the stand-ups? I haven't looked into it, but uh, I just poked around a little bit. Yeah. I've, at first, I was like, oh, that might be a little extravagant, but then thinking of times like right now... Are you just holding it forever and it, ever, and it, ever? It would be really nice, because tonight we're not doing it on the glide cam, we're doing it on the shoulder rig. Oh, be yeah. Because we have the light on top of the camera, which is, like, it almost pushes it out of the weight class of the glide cam. Yeah. Um, and so it just doesn't work very well, and then you also have to rebalance it and all that stuff. Man, that's a that, yeah, that's a good thing. So if you're watching this, expect a bunch of static shots <laughs> in the stand-ups this time. Uh, yeah, I think there's setups. Uh, I, I thought I saw there was a vest attachment for glide cam, hmm. but I, I know this much: like when we were shooting in San Francisco, those were like some of my favorite bits. Was Raphael would wear the whole shoulder gig, and it just they looked amazing. Right. Hmm. I feel. Uh, let's talk about. Our best investment was that thousand dollar Voigtlander lens. I know, right? It's so good, right? It, it's really phenomenal. It's uh, I'm I'm really glad. Like that's that was a tough thing to sell body on. Oh, how useful has the has the 4K camera been? Um, it's been pretty good. 
uh, it's kind of tough sometimes just, well, actually it's not too bad because we got, we got a, a bigger, a bigger uh, memory card for it. So it kind of evens out with the non 4k footage in their smaller cards. Right. Um, it has, it's, it's tough because the 4k footage is cropped in. So like already, so it's not as wide as the other stuff. Um, but it has been pretty helpful for, you know, the, the master shot whenever we need any kind of extra zoom in, close up, like you, whatever. You get ultimate coverage. You know that if it happened, it, you'll have something of it. Yeah, that totally. That you can zoom in with no matter where it is. Yeah, so that's that's been really nice. And have you, uh, I, I feel like I've seen a couple of times you do the faux zoom in thing where you took the 4K master and then zoomed into 1080p on the section of it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Totes. <laughs> it also looks pretty good. Is it, uh, how much are you using your new hero? Not a ton. Um, and you know, I, 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 had my, I had a GoPro before that that I also didn't use a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's one of these things where even though, you know, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be my master camera or anything, um, but it's one of those, it's, it's a tool that is kind of indispensable. It's a, uh, it's like, oh, what was it? Somebody, I forgot what we were talking about, but they were saying like, it's like a, it's like a, uh, you know, a screw, a Phillips head screwdriver in your toolbox. Like you're not going to use it all the time, but the one time you need it, nothing else will do. Pretty much. That's yeah. exactly what you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah. And it's also kind of like a monopod, like monopods are super crazy useful for very specific applications. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, you typically want a tripod or something else. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. I I was a little concerned because when when we try to do a behind the scenes kind of video, I I noticed that it didn't it didn't get all of the footage that I thought it was recording. Oh, because yeah, you're of course wearing it on your forehead. Yeah, you can't tell. And I was pretty sure it was still it was still blinking with its recording stuff, even though it wasn't uh, grabbing. Yeah, and it's that's the kind of thing that I really just need to run more tests and stuff to see if there's something weird with my model or if it's something weird that happens on GoPros or if it's... Where it's only finicky in this kind of situation. Or yeah. What this, uh, is there, is, is it, what kind of media do you put in there? Like just uh, SD cards? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's either SD or micro SD. I don't actually remember which. I think it's, I think it's SD. I'm gonna say SD. Right on. Yes. Yes, D. <laughs> yes, D, yes, D. Yeah. All right, so what do you want? I wanna have not accidentally stopped recording. Oh, that's fine. Uh, but yes. Yeah. If you had one wish. <laughs> 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 no, 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 like, uh, okay, so over the next, uh, we'll say year, what are some things, either scam school related or not, that would be just fun for you to shoot? Like, uh, you know, like, do you want do you want to travel? Do you want to do you want to cover? You know, do something in a big, wide, busy arena? Do you want to do something that's narrative based? Like, you know, on your great list of things you would like to have done mm -hmm. that you haven't, or maybe stuff that you have that you want to do again. What do you think? Um, I would like narrative stuff. I do like having a narrative focus which Scam School really only offers me in the ad space. Right. Um, well, and, oh, there was, hold on. Well, there's, there's an idea that I can't share now. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. We did talk about that, right? Yes, we okay. did. Um, the, but also, you know, I, I would love to do a faux documentary and, you know, the obvious thing is to make it some kind of like, I don't know, Brian is an old man or whatever, but it doesn't even matter. I mean, I guess if it's going to be on the Scam School channel, it would have to be that. But I guess Brian would have to be in it. <laughs> right. I'll t can I tell you something I'd really like to shoot? Sure. And we could put this on Scam School. I would have to get permission from Gerald Torregosa. He's a stand-up comedian in uh, New York. But he had this idea a long time ago. And I don't think he's ever done it. I'd love to. Uh, it's, you know, picture a, a shabby guy in a tuxedo. He's got a, maybe a bit of a beard or scruff or, I don't know, 
looks just it looks like a homeless guy. The tuxedo is you know ratted out and torn, and he's got a he's got a, uh, a, a you know cardboard sign that says "Will Magic for Food" or or maybe it says you know "Real Magic One Dollar" or whatever. But like everybody, just you know, and again maybe this is just a Texas thing, but every single corner there's a there's a manhandler going up and down collecting dollar bills from everyone. So it's a few minutes of that, and then he gets it and he uh, looks at his, maybe it's a ratted old top hat, and there's a bunch of crumpled ones or whatever. And he, uh, you know, you see him walk home, and he walks into this very nice neighborhood. And, uh, and uh, we'd have to figure out whether or not, like, something changes in his gait, like, at the end of uh, The Usual Suspects or not. But he ends up walking up to this very nice house, walks in, lets himself in. Uh, sits down at this ornate, nice dining room table, dumps out the hat, dollar bills are scattered all over, picks up the first one, the crumpled bill, looks at it, draws it a breath, and sighs, and, uh, and folds it into quarters, folds it into eighths, and then unfolds it as a hundred dollar bill, and sets it in the pile next to him. And then starts, like, that's the end of his rounds at the end of the day, where, like, that's all he does is the magician's trick to ones to hundreds, but, but mm. that's how he lives. Interesting. That is very magic-focused. Well, that's why, like, if you're going to put it on the Scam School channel... You're right, yeah, yeah. It, but... And also, I just... I, I also just want to do, like, some, like, slick, well-produced stuff. Like, with cinematography, I'm, I'm having a weird, like, identity crisis of trying to figure out what that show is. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Like, the, the the base commentary episodes are, are good, like, foundation to build off of. But I really want to do, uh, if, if you ever saw our 500 Days of Summer video, like, that was a interesting, like, analysis-type video that was well-produced. That was the one that uh, the, the director watched, right? Yeah, Mark yeah. Webb. Uh, and so stuff like that would be cool. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what, it's tough because I don't want to you know, overstep your bandwidth, but on top of the scam school stuff, I would so be interested as a side project to get you to do uh, a total revisit of of my, my stage show demo reel, because it's, right. you know, I always cut together just a bunch of TV clips or whatever, but it's like, that's probably 18 varieties of wrong, and it's definitely got clips that are... 15 years old on there and it's like I just I'm embarrassed by it and I just want a total reboot of it mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I think of well anyway but uh, that's neither here nor there uh yeah I don't know I got nothing <laughs> okay uh also I'm doing a um I'm going to be making a channel trailer for Cosmic Radio TV oh right on um, hopefully we'll have that out by out by Southwest. Um, also, I'm going to put together a bumper for 8-Bit Life since that's going to be uh, the video feed is going to be a patron exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, since we got those, uh, yeah. What's coming up on Scam Stuff front? Uh, we did our <clears throat> as we record this. In fact, I should probably tweet it out. We're in the last few hours of our morally repugnant sale right. uh, bit. Your Hitler sale? Uh, you know, I, I prefer to think of it as an anti-Hitler sale. Hashtag I, Hitler? I, I think you're a terrible person if you use the Hitler, the cool dude Hitler code. Uh, <laughs> which, by, by the way, I went through various degrees of being horrified and thrilled by that experiment. Right. Because, on the one hand, like, uh, on the one hand, you compare what we did to, you know, to Cards Against Humanity. It's like, hey, nothing. You know, come on. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I definitely got a guy that was, <laughs> just wrote, was like, I'm Jewish. Was that a Hitler joke? And I was like, I was like, well, I don't think it's a joke. I mean, not, not, at least not one that portrays Hitler in a positive light. Outside of the fact that I literally pay you money if you write the words cool dude Hitler. It's like, it's because it's horrific. It's the definition of horrific. Uh, so anyway, uh, we got, man, we got a ton of releases coming out. Yeah, I've seen your, your board. Yeah, um, 
there's uh, the biggest one we did. Uh, oh, shoot. Have I shown you the winner? Uh, th there, there's something coming up that we decided to try something different. And rather than design in-house, we held a contest and we set up a thousand dollar purse for the first wave of it uh and we picked a winner on 99designs.com hmm. have i shown you the winner mm. i i don't know okay i'll, I'll show i'll show it to you uh, sure I, I don't even want to say what it is because it's right. going to be like three months till it happens yeah but uh and then we're gonna we're gonna pay him to you know uh is whatever his hourly fee is to do the rest of it uh it really looks cool and it's like it went in a direction so different from what we expected that we're sort of rethinking the whole setup for it like I want to be able to he ended up injecting some story hmm. into it that, that I didn't expect and as a result I, I really really dig it interesting and um let's see it's a tease uh, it's a tease and we had the the beer magnets which released uh, dude the bottle loft yeah I love my bottle loft i am so thrilled that we started carrying it if for no other reason than because i i derive so much joy out of taking my six pack and just going blank blank and then having it just suspend up there hmm. it's highly satisfying interesting and we also what else uh we're, we're talking about i don't want to yeah, screw it all announce it we're, we're trying to figure out the the thermite kits um we want to we want to do pre-measure because the problem is you could buy uh, uh thermite is just iron oxide and uh, uh aluminum powder and you could buy the the types and the right you know mesh size and so on but then it's like in order to combine them at the right ratio you have to uh, you have to measure them and uh and, and uh, you need a gram scale and all of a sudden you're doing chemistry right and it's like mm -hmm. i suspect there's a lot of people that just like, man, I just want to light some thermite. Oh, and you also have to, you can't ignite it with just like a match or anything. You have to ignite it with a magnesium strip or something that's over, you know, two or 3,000 degrees. Right. And so what we want to do is have uh, individual uh, pouches where it's like each one's enough to destroy, we'll say, a laptop's hard drive. And uh, they're pre-measured so that you, all you have to do is... You, you got this, the right amount of rust, you got the right amount uh, uh, of the right type of aluminum powder, and it comes with two or three magnesium strips in there, and bada bing bang, you're able to either melt your hard drives or, or do science experiments or whatever. Hmm. By the way, this joint, Kung Fu Saloon, uh, I, I hung out here while I was waiting for Penny's acting class to finish, and uh, they've got like, uh, they got ski ball, it's in all retro arcade stuff in there, hmm. and uh, uh, the ski ball is free because uh, it doesn't do you any good because they don't have the ticket scam that everyone does. Gotcha. If you have kids, that, that ticket scam, though. <laughs> that ticket scam coming soon on scam school yeah dude we'll give you oh sh man what if we did we sold bulk rolls of, <laughs> of tickets that'd be pretty good wow wow that seems dark new product development you yeah. heard it here first <laughs> this is where it was born yeah for that all right well the good news is we're here yeah uh we're gonna park and then we're gonna do like eight stand-ups. Is it eight? Please don't say it's eight. It's a lot. Oh, jeez. I mean, we don't have to do all of them tonight. Okay. But we will do some of them tonight. And it will be rainy and it will be dark. And, uh. Dark like our soul. <laughs> hey, why does soul gotta be dark? <laughs> why does soul gotta be dark? All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna fade to black. Because this is artsy as hell. Yeah, it is. Blade Runner Land.